Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to clear your tracks on Linux operating systems with a variety of tools. All right, so why is this important? Now, if you're a penetration tester, you probably already know why this is important. Well, covering tracks or clearing your tracks is the final stage of penetration of the penetration testing process. So just before you start report writing, and that video is on its way, by the way, so do stay tuned for that. So clearing your tracks essentially involves clearing or wiping all the activity of an attacker or you being the attacker that is so as to avoid any detection by uh, incident response teams or forensic teams all right so it is vitally important in the penetration testing life cycle and of course if you look at it from a defensive point of view it can really test incident handlers and the blue team in their ability to discover an, an attacker in in the system whether they do have an intrusion detection detection system or not uh, and of course from the perspective of the forensics teams it can also test them in uh, sort of analyzing their skill and finding what the atta the attacker may have left behind in regards to logs uh, files or backdoors that they may have left running any user accounts that they were using etc so this is usually or commonly the biggest mistake vector that an attacker makes, all right, or that is associated with, with attackers. And it's something that has been ignored over the years, which is really, really weird, because if you read or pick up any penetration testing book, uh, when they essentially explain the penetration testing cycle or the stages of penetration testing, uh, clearing your tracks is one of them just before you actually write up your report and of, of course if you're an attacker this is the final stage of uh, of your attack and of course leaving some persistence behind but that's an, an, a video for another time so it's it's very very sad to see that this is not taken into consideration i'm not talking about this from an atta attacker's perspective but also from a blue team perspective where uh, this is something that is very easy for them because attackers are very, very sloppy. They, they haven't taken it into consideration. So it's really good uh, to essentially understand how this is done and how it can be uh, and how it can be analyzed from both perspectives, from a red team and a blue team perspective. So uh, this is usually, as I've said, the biggest mistake uh, of an attacker. And this is where the professional attackers are, are sorted out from the amateurs. So if you take a look at most of the biggest hacks in the world over the last two years, most of the, the detection has been made really, really easily from the malware that they have left behind, which they didn't clear, they should have cleared, but of course they were setting it up of, for persistence. As I said, that's a video for another time, but again, also masking malware or backdoors is also vital or an important piece of, uh, of the forensic, or, well, not the forensic, the post-exploitation. All right, now, when we talk about uh, the attacker's perspective, uh, he or she usually needs to de ev evade detection if there is an intrusion detection system, therefore preventing any incident response. And then he or she needs to clear the logs or backdoors that can be discovered by the forensics team. All right, so what an attacker is looking to do and should do is first of all, clear logs, modify registries or clear any of the registries that they did create. And lastly, remove any files or user accounts that they might have been using. All right. Now, as I've said, for this particular video, we'll be focusing on Linux. I also want to make an independent video for Windows because it is vitally important to understand how to do so on both these operating systems. And also I'll probably take a look at Mac OS as that is also getting quite, uh, quite popular, especially for penetration testers. So I'm going to be covering the fundamentals and you can do a lot of your own research. I'll be covering the tools that I've personally used before. And uh, really, uh, the last piece that I want to actually tell you is clearing your tracks will also depend on the privileges that you have on the system and whether or not you're remotely attacking the system. But for Linux, it is quite universal. All right. Now, I also have a little or a quick tool that I'll be sharing with you at the end of the video. That is an, a forensics tool or an anti forensics tool for Windows. So you can definitely check that out. Uh, I'll probably make another video of it. But for now, let's focus on Linux. All right. So let's talk about the Linux log files, which are the most important aspects uh, of, uh, of persistence or activity that is being logged on the Linux operating system or the Linux kernel. All right, so the, your, the log files on any Linux system can be found on, in the var. Well, actually, let me just change directory into that. So cd var, and it is stored in the log directory right over here. So now that I'm in the directory, I can list all the files in here. And these are all the log files that currently exist. And of course, if you just read their name, they're pretty self-explanatory. 
they have all they they have they are all they all have their various use cases and what data they are essentially logging all right so for example when talking about uh the auth.log file this stores authentication logs uh let well let's see if uh, let's see if we can find the kernel if we can find yeah there we are the kernel.log file which essentially stores all the kernel logs you then have the mail server logs which is of course uh, i don't think we have a mail server here but if we did you'd have the mail server logs as well you then have the system boot log which is your boot uh, your boot log which again we don't have here for some reason um we then have um you have your HTTP, uh, the HTTPD log, which essentially has logs for your web server. If you do have a web server uh, or uh, a web server, that being the Apache web server. So again, there are a lot of log files here. We're going to be focusing on uh, the auth uh, log right of you, which essentially contains the authentication logs. And then we'll take a look at the bash history file, which uh, is very important as well. We'll also take a look at the shred file as well. So let's talk about the shred file and the, 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 the auth.log file. All right, so if I'm just to open up the auth.log file here, this essentially stores all the uh, the authentication logs, which are very, very important for to a forensics team uh, to essentially analyze what was happening to the system, what activities were carried out, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so you can go ahead and, and analyze all, all, all of the files right over here and get an idea of, uh, of essentially uh, what was going on. And that, of course, that is... Uh, a, that deserves its own video in, in its own right because that is more of a forensics type of video uh, but for now we're looking to get rid of this because remember if you're an attacker you want to get rid of all of these files so that uh, they, they really cannot build an idea of what was going on on, on the system all right so let me just exit out of this and uh, as i've said the tool that is most recommended for any of this getting erasing files erasing hard drives is shred now, if you haven't heard of Shred, Shred is essentially a tool that allows you to delete uh, or erase a file permanently. So it allows you to delete files data permanently. Now, many of you might be confused with saying, well, why can't you just delete it? Well, if you delete a file, it can be recovered. And I'll explain this in a second. So Shred allows you to delete files and data permanently and prevents the recovery of that data. It does this because it, over it overwrites the file multiple times with ones and zeros. Now, when you traditionally de delete a file with your uh, graphical user interface or you simply hit the delete a key on your keyboard, what's happening here is your file isn't being deleted. It is simply marked as a space in which data can be written to or data can be written on top of, therefore replacing the previous data. And of course, this is going to be dependent on how you use the computer. And that's why when you, you see these real amateurs uh, doing questionable things on their computer, you know, doing illegal stuff on the computer, just delete the file without even realizing that you aren't deleting. It is deleted for you, the user, but uh, in the back end, the file still exists. It's simply marked, uh, the, the sector is simply marked as, uh, as a space that should be written onto. Uh, and when, when it's written onto, then the files are lost, but you can still perform a lot of data recovery. That's why you have an industry dedicated to data recovery because of how operating systems are and how they, uh, they essentially mark spaces or data that you won't delete it as spaces that can be overwritten. All right, so that is the difference between keeping files and maintaining uh, the fact that they cannot be written to or overwritten, that is, by other files and uh, and w w when you actually hit delete so w when we talk about a tool like shred shred is a tool that i've used uh, a lot of times before for wiping or er erasing hard drives when i'm when i'm done with them when i'm disposing them or when i'm selling drives which is very very rare never sell your drives all right so shred comes pre-installed in kali linux and i'm guessing in pretty much all the other distributions so i'm just going to clear this out and uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to open up shred here with the help command and the shred tool is quite comprehensive and i'll try and explain all the commands all right so the shred command essentially when you when you're writing to a file or a particular drive it uh, it essentially overwrites the specified uh, files repeatedly and therefore making it difficult or impossible for uh, you know hardware software or, or, or software recovery to to get the data back all right so the options or the parameters that you can specify with the shred tool are as follows you have the f uh, the f command which, which essentially allows you to change permissions to allow writing if needed you have the n command which is the iterations or essentially this allows you to overwrite the amount of times you want which is 
which is good. The default amount of times is three, which is okay. But if you're really paranoid about, you know, about, about, about your files and you really want to get rid of them, you can increase the amount of times or the iterations. You then have the size, uh, the size, uh, the number of bytes to shred. Uh, you then have the U command, which is essentially allows you to uh, to truncate, uh, it essentially truncates and remove the files after overwriting. You then have the V command over here, which shows your progress or verbose, uh, shows verbose information about the progress. You then have the X command right over here, which essentially, uh, this what this does is, again, is, it's self-explanatory, but this does not uh, round the files up to the next full block. Uh, we then have the Z command, which adds the final overwrite with zeros to hide shredding. So it uh, usually with... Uh, with software recovery tools, they can actually detect if there was shredding done and this prevents that and you have U, the U command, which essentially removes the file after shredding, which is what we're going to be taking a look at as well. All right, so let's take a look at the command that we'll be using and I'll explain what's going on. All right, so we'll be using the VFZU command, which if we just look at the arguments here, we are going to be using the V, so verbose V, F Z U. So F, we're going to force to change the permissions if they exist. So if you don't have read and write permissions, this is going to force it. Uh, so uh, there we are. So Z, uh, we're going to use the V F Z U. So then Z is going to be essentially add a final overwrite with zeros to hide the shredding process, which is good. And we are going to remove the file uh, after or after the overwriting process. All right. So that is what is going on here. So to do that, we simply type in shred. And after shred, we type in our commands or the combination of commands. So vfzu and the file, which is auth.log. And I'm going to hit enter. And there we are. All right. So shred, it's going to start the shredding process right over here. And you can see shred uh, auth.log was renamed to 000, etc. Renamed, renamed, renamed all the way to, uh, to, to the fact that the file was removed or destroyed. All right. So that gets rid of the auth.log file, which essentially gets rid of the authentication logs. Very, very simple. You can take a look at all the other logs. And of course, you might want to get rid of all the other logs that uh, that might have existed before or in the fact in, in regards to the services that you might have used. So for example, if you used Mac Changer, which is quite rare, you might want to get rid of that a log file, the kernel log file, which is right over here. So if we open it up, kernel.log, and there we are. These are all the log files in regards to the to the kernel. So again, this is a file that you might want to get rid of, or you can simply edit what you don't want in any of these log files, so as to to to, to sort of throw off the forensic teams or off off your back to, to essentially make it look really really traditional. All right. So that is how to clear your log files. And of course, you can use shred for deleting any other files. This is a video not uh, it's not designed to be uh, to be about shred, but there you go. You can use shred to erase files uh, permanently. All right, so do be careful with it as well. Now let's talk about bash history, which is a video that most of you guys requested uh, me to, to talk about. Now bash history essentially keeps a record of all the commands that were executed by a user on the Linux command line. Now this is very, very important because the, uh, the bash history is a, is a file that is kept uh, usually separated for each individual user on the Linux system. So if you are the root user, you have your own bash history file. If there was a user called Alexis, he will also have his own bash history file. You get the idea. So uh, the directory in which it is stored in is in the home user, the user that being the user that you are using. Uh, and the file is the dot bash history file. All right, so I'll get to that in a second. So if there was a user, let me just go back into the root directory and this is where it is stored. So if you do have a user, it is stored in the home and the username. So this is where you put in the username and it is stored under the bash history file right over here. All right. So that is if you are using a particular user on the system, which is quite obvious. But if you do have root privileges, then it's also important. But you essentially want to get rid of all the bash history because this will essentially give forensic teams a list of all of what you did on that system. All right. So let me actually show you how this can be analyzed. So uh, I'm just going to open up nano here. And since I'm in the root directory, I think I should have the there, there we are. This is the bash history file. Uh, now, I personally have a lot of important information in there, so I'm going to simply show you how to get to wipe it. All right. Now, wiping it, you can also use shred if you want to, but I don't recommend doing that uh, because, again, you're really starting to 
you're helping the forensic team build uh, an idea of what type of attacker they're dealing with. So I would recommend keeping things as normal as possible. All right. So if you, you can also use the null redirect to clear the file, which is what I'm going to do. So you can essentially use the null redirect as follows. So bash history and uh, as and once I hit enter, it'll essentially clear the file because I'm using null redirect. So it's essentially clearing the entire file. So bash history. Let me open up the file. Sorry. Uh, nano uh, and um, bash uh, history as follows and there we are so it's empty now you might be wondering well it is empty but did it contain anything well if we start using the terminal here which uh, am I currently using this so I'm using terminator uh, yeah there we are so I was using a meterpreter session I was just working on a few hack the box videos which will be also be coming out so don't worry about that so if I was to do you know, sudo apt uh, get update there is a command that I did run and we try and open up uh, the bash history file right over here. Uh, we'll let we'll that running and uh, that is in my uh, terminator session. All right, so let's open it up one more time. And uh, for some reason it isn't showing up Well, we have to wait for the command to execute. So uh, let me just wait for that to execute. So I'll get back to you when this is done. All right, I'm back. I've uh, essentially just ran a few commands. I was just doing a bit of uh, Metasploit work. I was using Mesa Venom, all that good stuff, because I really wanted to show you how much information the bash history file can uh, can actually reveal. So let me just open it up one more time here. Uh, and my terminal always lags out when I resume a video, which is really weird. Something to do with my processor. Let me know if you guys know what's going on here. All right, so bash, uh, bash history like so and we hit enter and there you are so you can see that I was doing uh, some very interesting things here so I went to my desktop I created a payload the mess of venom I copied the uh, the payload to my Apache directory I restarted Apache uh, looks like I removed a Matilda installation I also removed uh, an index.html file uh, well, uh, I cleared the terminal. I actually missed, I misspelled. So yeah, this reveals a lot of information about what the attacker was doing or what a particular user was doing on the system. So so there you go. And uh, it'll also tell you that your attacker has uh, really bad uh, typing skills and really makes a lot of spelling mistakes. So yeah, you can pretty much get an idea of what ex exactly is going on here. All right, so that's pretty much going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section on my social networks on my website. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace, guys.